Well, the situational hitting just wasn't there last night. <laughs> Welcome to Philly's Hatfield Media, and today we're going to recap in last night's game between the Philly Phillies and the Texas Rangers. As the Phillies lose six to four to the Rangers as they drop the first game of this Twitku game set. I guess before getting into this video, please subscribe if you have not yet. Please don't forget your bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and let's get into this. This video is also brought to you by All Things Phillies. All Things Phillies provides a daily video of highlights from the game. So please go subscribe to his channel. Link in the description section. Uh, so another disappointing loss for this Phillies team last night. Uh, a failure to hit run score position. Uh, the bad defense, specifically on the left side of the infield, continues. As Alec Bohm, I was praising him the other day, recapping the uh, loss to New York Mets uh, Monday afternoon. I was praising him, saying, oh, well, he's gotten so much better defensively. Oh, my goodness gracious. Wow, I'm so proud of him. And then he goes back out there last night. Uh, you know, the double plays that needed to be turned were not turned. Uh, Didi Gregorius kicking the ball around an old place. Uh, you know, bad throws is not a good, fundamentally sound game last night. And uh, this Phillies team, we've seen some fundamental baseball, especially against the Colorado Rockies last week. Uh, you know, getting a job in the scoring position, um, and uh, we just didn't get to see that last night. I mean, the fundamentals just weren't there, and when you don't play good fundamentals, it really had a disadvantage. The Phillies certainly were at, playing at a disadvantage last night because of their own mistakes. Uh, this is a game that should have been won. Playing this Texas Rangers team, it was 8-14 coming into the series. So there's simply no excuse uh, to uh, not, not just even lose one game. There's no excuse. You had to sweep. Uh, I'm going to be disappointed now. I don't even, even if we win today, I'm still going to be disappointed because you had to sweep. You had to sweep. And it wasn't done. It just wasn't done. Uh, and I just kind of had a feeling they were going to do something to mess it up. Uh, you know, typical Phillies. You know, pick up the scoring summary here in the top of the first inning. It did start off so well early as Ranger Suarez on the mound. Yeah, he allows a two-run shot to Mitch Garniver on a fly ball to left center. And uh, Garcia also comes around to score on that. Uh, and it's 2-0 Texas here in the first. So this is not a good start. It was Garver's third home run of the season. Uh, and uh, the Rangers, you know, jump out to a nice early 2-0 lead. Uh, so this was not a very good start for Ranger Suarez, uh, and uh, that ball was absolutely crushed. Uh, so uh, two nothing Texas. Then we pick it up here in the bottom of the first inning. Reese Hoskins, this is huge. He doubles on a line drive to left field. Uh, huge hit right here. Alec Bowman, and JG Muto come around to score, and the Phillies tie it at two. So going against John Gray, uh, the Texas Rangers. Of course, we remember him on the uh, Colorado Rockies. Uh, but to Reese Hoskins getting the job done right here in this situation. Uh, so early on the ball game, we were, you know, driving them some runs to score in score position. Uh, but just not later in the ball game. It really, really mattered. If we just were not getting the job done. Uh, but Reese Hoskins with his sixth double of the season uh, to tie the game at two. Then we pick it up here in the same inning. Didi Gregorius singles on a line drive up the middle to center field. And Reese Hoskins comes around to score. And the Phillies now lead it three to two. Uh, so after we give up the two run shot in the top of the first thing we come back in the bottom of the first and take the lead uh so Dredi Gregorius I mean I'm not happy with him uh, I'm not happy with him. I was very happy when he did this to you know put us in front but his defense really proved to be costly last night uh you know it's just I'm gonna say it again I mean just not handling the routine plays not making the routine throws uh, so, uh, very, very, very disappointing and totally unacceptable. Totally unacceptable. Uh, but he gets the job done right there uh, to put the Phillies on top 3-2. to two. And then the top of the fourth inning, Jonah Helm ties up the ball game as he homers on a fly ball to left field. Uh, and the Rangers tie it at 3. That was his third home run of the season. Another home run allowed by Ranger Suarez. Pick it up here in the top of the sixth inning. Uh, Zach Rex doubles on a sharp line drive to right field. Uh, Jonah Helm and Daniel Lowe come around to score. Uh, uh, and uh, I don't know what in the world Matt Veerling was doing out there. I mean, taking forever to get the ball in. And it was a really, really strong throw to home plate. A really, really strong throw. Uh, but uh, I tell you what, my goodness gracious. Get the ball in. Uh, get the ball in. Uh, it was taking him forever out there. It was taking him forever. And it was a strong throw. This would have been a couple seconds earlier. He would have been out. Uh, that would have saved us a run. Not really, you know, would have mattered anyway, I guess. It gets a good change of mentality since we did lose by two. Uh, so we find the three Texas Rangers lead as they take the lead. Then we pick it up here in the same inning. Marcus Simeon hits a ground ball in the third. This is a routine play to Ralph A routine play. 
as he uh, stumbles around, he you know, takes a couple hops. I mean, uh, one will throw the ball to first, and of course, Marcus Simeon beat him. Marcus Simeon does not have some outstanding amount of speed, ladies and gentlemen. I understand he's got some, he's definitely got some speed, but it's not, it's not uh, Trey Turner busting out a line. My goodness gracious. Uh, get the ball to first base. And uh, he was, you know, hopping, and, you know, it's just like, come on, get the ball to first base. Uh, so not a good play right there for Alec Bohm, and it cost the Phillies another run on an infield single. Of course, that was not officially an error, uh, but bat fundamentals. Uh, that's a routine play that every average third baseman should be able to make. And, of course, I jinxed him. Of course, I jinxed him. I said, hey, his defense has looked a lot better, and it was for a while. It was. It really, really was. And the good thing is Alec Bohm did own up to it. Uh, to his mistakes, which I like. I like a guy that, you know, admits his mistakes, but uh, come on, clean up this defense. Clean up this heads-up play. Clean up these fundamentals. Stop leaving so many runs in scoring position. Get the big hit. Get the big hit. Uh, in the meeting order last night, very, very disappointing. Bryce, what's going on with Bryce? We'll talk about this a little bit later, uh, but uh, a 6-3 uh, to three Rangers lead. And we pick it up here in the bottom of the eighth inning. JT Rimuto homers on a towering fly ball to left center field. That ball was a mile high in the air. My goodness gracious, I was up there for a while. Really didn't carry out by much, uh, but it was able to get out his second home run of the season. A, of course, it was a solo shot. And the Phillies down, down by two. Now a 6-4 to four ball game. Uh, and that'd be your final as the Phillies lose the first game of this quick two-game series against this really just a bad Texas Rangers squad coming in when they were 8-14 coming in. Now, of course, they're 9-14 because they're playing against us. Uh, and it may be 10-14 by the uh, midnight tonight. Who knows? Nothing, one thing would surprise me with this team, Kyle Schwarber out of the leadoff spot. I mean, he was really hot coming into this game, and he just did nothing last night. I mean, we just continue to watch pitches go right down the middle of the plate. And then there's a pitcher bounces to the plate. They're swinging away and hacking and, you know, lunging out and just looking like a fool. Uh, and as I said before in past videos, I mean, uh, I'm not really one to talk, right? I, mean, I guarantee if I went out there and tried to do it, I wouldn't do so well. Very, very poor plate approaches by these Philly hitters last night. Very, very poor plate approaches that we have seen already so far this year. Uh, you know, with being overly impatient, uh, just being overly eager, swinging at everything. I'm tired of seeing Bryce swing at the first pitch. Enough of that. Enough of that. Kyle Schwarber back in the layoffs, but of course he didn't do anything last night. Alpum collects two knocks last night, scores one of the fills, four runs. But please, for the love of God, clean up that defense at third. Please. Please. Uh, that routine play that he should have gotten Simeon on. Uh, and uh, I, I just say uh, it just goes on and on and on. There's so many mistakes over there at third base. Clean up the defense. Uh, Bryce Harper, they rough hitless performance last night, uh, striking out twice. Uh, you know, Bryce is just not looking very good, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, I understand he hit that one home run off of Scherzer, but he didn't really look great in the Mets series. You know, he's hitting 242 with a 777 OPS. Uh, so uh, he's nearly not walking a lot. He only has six walks so far in the year. The only thing that's really helping his OPS is just because he's gotten a you know, good amount of extra base hits so far this year. I mean, of course, Bryce has always been a doubles machine. He had a career high in doubles last year in his MVP year, uh, second MVP year. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's been a guy that uh, really likes to rank up the doubles. He only has four home runs so far this year. Of course, they're all solo shots. Uh, but the walks have been very, very disappointing. And granted, in his credit, I mean, he should have been over for three last night with a walk. I mean, that one pitch... Uh, was very, very close. I didn't get to see it on pitch pass, but just from standing out in right field, it looked off the plate. Uh, now, again, I mean, I'm sure some of you watching this video got to see it on pitch cast, and if you think that was a strike, go ahead and comment and say, hey, hey, Luke, I mean, that was a strike. Uh, but uh, I did not get to see it. But, I mean, just from my vantage point out in Section 104 right field, it did not look like a strike. That's just my opinion. Uh, that is just my opinion. Uh, but uh, Bryce with a rough performance last night. And we also can't uh, forget that he is battling that elbow strain. Now, he's not 100%. Um, and we've seen this in years past. In 2016, never was proven. But a lot of speculation that Bryce Harbour was playing through an injury that year. Uh, as I said, was never proven. Uh, but uh, I believe it. I definitely believe that he was playing through some type of injury or something that year. JT Remuto collects two knocks last night. The home run. Uh, you know, he definitely had a good night last night. Drawing a walk. Uh, scoring two runs, uh, Reese Haskins only when it was a big one, that line drive doubled down the left field line to tie the ball game in the top of the first inning. Uh, that was great to see. Diego Gorris collects two knocks, that RBI single, but uh, bad error, a uh, really, really bad error. And I always talk about setting the tone in the game, changing the mentality of the game. When your defense goes out there and doesn't make routine plays, doesn't play fundamentally sound around as your pitcher, we all kind of knew it was going to be like this going into the season. I think we had a feeling that, hey, I mean, this team's not – 
going to be very good defensively. I think we kind of had a feeling this is going to happen, uh, but uh, it's really not fun to watch. It's really not fun to watch uh, them play when they're playing like this. Gene Segura just continues to just do nothing up at the plate. Uh, you know, of course, he doesn't really strike out very much, even though he did strike out last night, collects one knock, but he's swinging that, you know, stuff he shouldn't be swinging at, and, you know, down in the dirt, he just, it's just rough start to the year for him, he didn't look good in spring training, Roman Quinn gets to start out in center, uh, because Nick Castellanos' wife gun in the labor, of course, I'm always, uh, you know, the, the family first guy, uh, I've always, uh, you know, been adamant about that, so, I mean, I always believe family first, family first. First, Roman Quinn did collect a knockout there, and uh, Matt feeling two knocks last night. I mean, a crucial situation. Second and third, nobody out. We get nothing, nothing. That's what I'm talking about. The fundamental baseball was not there. Um, I mean, how in the world do you get nothing out of that? At least get a sack fly or something. I mean, think about second and third. Nobody had just get two sack flies. That's not really that much to ask for, and we simply couldn't do it. Uh, so extremely disappointing. Extremely disappointing. Uh, so Joe Barrera came off the bench and unfortunately didn't do anything. Uh, Ranger Suarez, five innings, six hits, five runs, only three of them earned because of the, you know, the bad defense, two walks and three strikeouts. Uh, you know, it just wasn't very good last night. As I talked about, he's the kind of guy that when his defense doesn't back him up, when his defense doesn't show up, when the Phillies do not play fundamentally stand, he usually doesn't really pitch that very well. Uh, we've seen that already so far this year. Uh, he just seems to get rattled very, very easily. And can you blame him for pitching on this squad? Can you blame Ranger Suarez for that? I don't think you can. I don't think you can. Uh, so he gets smacked with the loss also of the season. 2-1 and one now on the year. Serena Dominguez got charged with that earned run when Al Boehm couldn't even... I mean, come on, man. Uh, you know, throwing the ball to first. I mean, he was just loud ganging, you know, taking a couple hops. I mean... That's a play that had to be made, and this wasn't, and uh, I do not blame Trinity Dominguez for that. Striking out two in that inning, uh, but uh, Nick Nelson with two saw last night. He continues to impress, uh, so that was great. You know, three strikeouts, and Andrew Bellotti, uh with a clean uh, top of the ninth inning, striking out two. It was nice to see Ted Zerby of Natch Report at the game last night, friend of the pod. Uh, I got to sit with him for a little bit. I mean, he's a really good guy. Hopefully, we can get him back on here uh, soon when the Phillies play in the Nats. Of course, that's not going to be until like June 16th or something like that. It's just ridiculous. Ridiculous how long we have to wait to play those guys. Uh, but another tough loss for this Phillies team. Another tough loss for this Phillies team. Uh, another you know game that they should have won. I mean, going against the Texas Rangers team, you have to win these kind of games. So 6.45, the first pitch tonight. Perez 0-2 with a 3-year rank. Going against Zach Lear, 1-3 with a 5-7-9 ERA. I don't know how to feel going into this game. I really, really don't. I mean, Zach Wheeler, uh, you know, is he going to be the strikeout guy tonight? Or is he going to be the ground ball guy? I mean, who knows? Depends on uh, what he throws and where he throws. Uh, so hopefully that fastball comes out popping. I mean, hopefully you don't see that drop in velo. Uh, so, uh, you know, maybe he goes a little off speed. Uh, that's definitely his secret weapon. Like that curveball can be very, very underrated at times. Uh, but it's nice to know that, you know, the big dogs in the bullpen are still rested up a little bit. And I, off the, on Monday, help us a lot uh, out in that bullpen. I mean, you still got Brad Hand out there, Corey Knable, the guys that are rested up out there. Uh, so this bullpen has been good this year, so the exception of a few nights. Uh, you know, the, out in Colorado, C.J. Crone home run, the exception of Sunday night against the New York Mets and a couple other times, it's been pretty good. Of course, the bullpen is always going to have their moments. Uh, but uh, it has been pretty solid. I always said this. I mean, this is a 500 baseball team so far this year. We said 11 and 13. But we had the potential to be so good. I've always said that. I've always said that. As we sit in third place, as the Atlanta Braves are 11 and 15, as they are seven back, we are six back. And the Mets have won two in a row, unfortunately. Uh, and the Marlins still sit one over 500, but they've lost their last three. Uh, so uh, the Nationals uh, win again last night. Josh Bell, man, what has gotten into that guy? Uh, he's off to a fast start so far this year. Uh, you know, he's definitely off to a fast start. I mean, he hit like 260 last year, 27 homers, 88 RBI. Uh, but uh, he's off to a fast start this year indeed. Juan Soto, I mean, he's drawn a lot of walks, but he's hit around like 258 or something like that. So uh, Bryce Harper and Juan Soto, you know, they're not really having the best start of the year. The only thing about Juan is that he's walking. Bryce isn't even walking really that much. He only has six walks so far this year. Uh, so that's incredibly disappointing. So uh, I apologize for getting this video out so late. I had to go run an errand for, you know, for one of my family members. So, so I apologize for that. So guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. Please turn the notification bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video. Do you have the social media link in the description section at Philly Science Soup Media, Instagram, Twitter, Instagram. Follow me on Twitter at Beyond Soup Media. Car text 267-225-3292. Email me, Philly Science Soup Media at gmail.com. So guys, Thanks so much for watching 645 today for Ezra. I'm Luke and I'll talk to you later. Let's go fill this. I'll see you guys.